Today, I'm going to show you my free step-by-step -step SEO checklist for ranking content number one with AI. You're also going to discover a free alternative to expensive SEO tools for creating content outlines and ranking AI content that will save you money. Additionally, you're going to learn how to reduce the risks of AI to protect your site's rankings. And make sure you keep watching because I'm going to show you a surprising free way to use AI detectors for SEO. So I'll come on to that later. Let's go. So one of the first systems I actually want to show you is my SAP checklist for quality checking your content. Now, why do you want to do this? Because obviously we do all of these crazy experiments where maybe we're going to build out 32 sites with 22,000 posts in 20 days, or we build 32 websites in 30 days, etc. And they're great experiments and they're for fun. And I love making these videos. Honestly, it's, it's like magic playing with AI. But the problem is that if this is your website and you really care about it, you don't just want to smash out loads of content. The ideal way to create content, especially if it's a website you care about, for example, you've got like a banking website. Well, let's say someone owns a banking website. Well, they can't change their URL quite often, right? And they can't burn their domain. So it would make zero sense to run all sorts of crazy experiments like we do on this channel because you're not quality checking your content. And if your website gets burned, you can't really just create a new domain and all the work you've put into your domain is not sustainable. So how can you quality check your content? Well, this is what the SEO checklist is about. And this is how I basically make sure that my content is optimized in the best way for websites I really care about. So for example, when we have human writers at our agency, we're going to make sure, first of all, they're targeting low competition keywords so that our clients can rank their content really fast. On top of that, they're going to create an outline on exactly what they need to write about. And how can we do that? Well, quite often what we do is we use a tool like Neuron Writer. Otherwise, you can just manually do this yourself by scraping the top FAQs from Google for free and then checking your competitors and looking at their sites and the headings they've used, et cetera, for free. So for example, let's say you're trying to rank for a keyword like wider words wiggle, you would go through the top keywords and then you would scrape your competitors and go through the headings and go, right, what are they doing correctly that Google actually likes in their content? And that might be a case of checking the word count for the page, what sort of headings they've included, what pages are they linking out to, have they formatted the content nicely, and basically just analyzing everything on their site to reverse engineer what works well. And that's what you would feed into your outline. So you absolutely do not need no writer. That's just a tool that's going to save you time. Otherwise, you can do it manually yourself. Same, if you type in the keyword wider birds wiggle, then you're going to get in people also ask section. You can easily scrape these FAQs for your content outline so that your content is as comprehensive as it possibly can. And you can do that for free just using the process I've shown you. So this checklist is basically designed to take you from step one all the way to the ending and make sure that your content is created in the best way it possibly can. And then, of course, there's other things that you want to make sure you're doing. So, for example, making sure that your article matches the search intent of Google. So, for example, if you check out this keyword and you're like, OK, well, everyone's answered the question inside the title, therefore, I'm going to do the same. But also everyone's done like a comprehensive guide to why the birds wiggle. What they haven't done is create like a top 10 list of the reasons why. So you want to match the search intent of what is the problem users are trying to solve and how can you tailor your content to match that intent, aka that is the search intent of the keyword on Google. And the problem is most people, they go off and they create whatever they want, but they don't look at what the problem is the user on Google is trying to solve. So that's why it's really important to figure this out. And then of course you want some readability stuff, like you want to put the sentences on each line, add some pictures in there, embed some nice YouTube videos and basically do everything you can to update your content in the best way possible. So using an SOP like this, whether you do it, whether your team do it, you can easily follow step-by-step -step everything you need to do. What's quite interesting about checklists and systems like this, and this is one of the reasons that I love building systems, is that essentially the human brain, aka when you're hiring people, when you're doing this yourself, has a tendency to skip over things, right? And this comes down to a few key principles. So number one is, Basically, our brain would normally overlook a few important steps from the checklist, which means that our SEO content is less likely to rank. Also, instead of having everything stored inside your head, well, you can just have these systems built out. And additionally, whether you're trying to scale, whether you're trying to sell your business, having systems like this just makes your business more sellable because you have systems in place and it's not just all down to you or one of your VAs and your team to manage everything and remember everything. And then if someone leaves your team, well, you've got an SOP and a system right there to get someone trained pretty quickly. We do this for pretty much everything in the business. 
even if I'm going on holiday, I'll have a checklist to make sure that I don't forget anything important when I'm, you know, traveling and I need to create a YouTube video or whatever. Now, one of the other systems that I actually love at the minute is Poe.com. And I think it's got a lot of potential. And I think there's a lot that's unexplored here that you could do for free on Poe.com that you couldn't do on ChatGPT. So let me show you exactly how you can prompt engineer using the web search on Poe.com to create high quality content that will actually rank with SEO. So the, this is the keyword that we've picked for this particular example. And one of the reasons that we've done this is because as you can see, when you scroll down the page, you can see Reddit ranking on the first page of Google. You can see Kiora ranking on the first page of Google and every single result that is on the first page for this particular keyword is text-based. So there's no images, etc., which means there's going to be more traffic driven to the page that we actually rank for this keyword if we rank at all. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to start creating the outline first. Now, how are we going to do this? I actually talked about this free chat GPT alternative, and I'm kind of excited to test whether it actually ranks for SEO content because it's definitely a really powerful alternative to chat GPT four. And I know a lot of people who watch this probably want like a free version of this tool. And also if you look at a previous video of mine, where we talk about how we ranked in just four hours. We actually used a tool called NeuronWriter, which is really powerful for SEO, but I want to test, right, can we actually do a lot of the work from NeuronWriter, but can we do it inside our free tool on Poe.com? So let's get this party started. And what we're going to do is we shall go to explore. And then from here, we're going to go down to web search. Now, why web search? Because we want to check who's ranking on the first page of Google for our target keyword, but also what are they doing? And we don't want to really analyze ourselves because it can take a long time. It can require a bit of research and it's a lot of messing around. Whereas with the process that I'm planning to use today, and this is an experimental approach, what we're going to do instead is actually scrape the first page of Google using po.com. And I'm going to run you through the prompts. Plus I'm going to create an SOP based on this keyword so that if you're trying to replicate this for your own website and you're trying to rank for different keywords, then you can learn how to do it yourself or you can give it to your team. So let's get into it. And um, one of the things that you have to be aware of when it comes to using this web search is that actually you can't put that many characters into it, right? So I'm not going to put a massive prompt into the web search feature simply because it won't give me all the answers I need. For example, you can see I've previously used it in a video of mine and you can see that not everything I requested actually came back. So a lot of the requirements I asked it to use in the problem that I gave Poe.com was kind of ignored. So that's why I'm going to split this down into separate prompts so that you have a free workflow that's still based on your competitors, still using the processes you can see with other expensive SEO tools, but you can do it for free step by step and you can just copy and paste it from my SOP. Now to get a really good prompt, we have to reverse engineer what's working for other tools. So for example, this article that I ranked pretty quickly previously on Google, there's a few different factors this tool produces that help us understand exactly what makes a article rank. So for example, we want to reverse engineer from our competitors, what the average word count is for the keyword that we want to rank. Why do we want to do that? Because if Google's ranking articles that have an average of 2000 words, ideally we want to go for that too. And the same for the list of terms in our competitors articles, right? So a lot of these keywords right here are included in our competitors articles. That's why Neuron Writer suggests them. And therefore, that's what we want to figure out too. These are known as LSI keywords. Now, we could go really in depth into like H1s, H2s, etc. But I just want to do the 80 20 of this because we're doing a YouTube video and I could spend all day creating this video, but I think it's better to be productive and actually get stuff done. So that's why we're going to skip ahead to the competitor structure. So basically, what we want to figure out from here is what are the most relevant headings our competitors have included that we should also include in our content to make it as relevant as theirs. And that signals to Google that our content is authoritative too. But the other thing about this is not just getting the same headings, but also figuring out what is the most relevant order of the headings, right? Because when it comes to writing an article, you want to give the most value at the top that's most relevant to the article. So for example, if the article is about the spiritual meaning of brown birds flying into houses, then we want to answer the most relevant questions at the top. So for example, the spiritual significance of brown birds, the significance of birds flying into houses, etc., And then the less relevant stuff. So for example, ways to attract and connect with brown birds, you probably put at the bottom of the article. 
So we need to put that into our prompt too. And basically what I'm trying to show you here is my process for creating prompts for AI and SEO so that number one, you understand why we're doing what we're doing, but also you can create your own prompts and get very creative with the process too. And that's why we're adding inside our prompt headings in the most relevant order, basically making our article very comprehensive and as detailed as it possibly can be for the target word count that we have. And one of the things to note here is when you're writing an article like this, you want to cut out all the fluff because if you have a limited word count, like we do, we want to get a similar word count to our competitors, then we should also make sure that the article doesn't contain any fluff, which is why we're going to add that to our prompt, particularly when we're creating the content. Ideally, you want to cut out any fluff, plus every sentence must add value. Additionally, you want to have markdown format. Why do you want markdown format? Because you want to structure the article in a way where it's very easy for Google to understand what are the most important headings and then what are the subheadings underneath and what's the actual content at the paragraph text like you can see here. So basically in the prompt one, we're going to say, this is my keyword right here that we want to rank for. Create an article outline for SEO by reverse engineering the word count, LSI keywords and headings. And ideally we want to reverse engineer our top ranking competitors on Google. So now we have to test it and make sure this prompt actually works. So what we're going to do is we shall go onto web search like so. I'm going to delete all the previous history. And now we're going to plug in this prompt right here. And hopefully it works. If not, we can change it and tweak it. But I want to show you the whole process in terms of how we do actually tweak these things and make them more powerful. And as you can see, it's come back with the outline, but it's not giving us a word count and it's not giving us the LSI keywords. So you have to split this into separate prompts. All right. So now we've split it into separate prompts. So the first prompt that we're going to use is this one right here. So in the web search, we'll copy this keyword and give me the relevant LSI keywords, plug that in, search in the web. And finally, we've got the relevant LSI keywords for our article. Perfect. And you would just take that content and add it to your outline. The next step is we're going to ask this prompt and this time around, we're going to say create an article outline for SEO by reverse engineering our top ranking competitors on Google. Give me the average word count of my competitors and the headings in the relevant order. And so from here, the system that I'm showing you is basically how to build out a content outline for free without using fancy SEO tools, but still getting the relevant information that, that is required. So what I've done for the keyword is split this into three separate prompts, right? So prompt one, we're going to check out the LSI keywords. Prompt two, we're going to check the headings and create the article outline for the keyword. And then finally, prompt three, we're going to figure out the average word count. Why are we doing these prompts separately? Simply because the web search on po.com doesn't give us all the answers in one prompt. So we have to split them out separately. So it's really quick and easy. All you need to do is you would change the keyword for whatever keyword you want to rank for. And from here, you can start building out your content outline in a way that is completely free. This strategy is completely free. You don't need to pay for web search, etc. Po.com is a free tool. And this is a nice little workflow and system that's based on what's working for me in the past. And so now it's come back to us with the LSI keywords that are relevant for the article we want to create. And you can see each of the LSI keywords is referenced to the relevant article that we want to rank. So basically what Po.com with the web search feature has done is Google the keyword, go through the top ranking results, figure out relevant keywords we can include within our article and basically reverse engineered what our competitors are doing. The next prompt is we're going to figure out, okay, what are the best headings and what's the article structure going to be like? So we're going to use this prompt right here, which is basically feed it the keyword and then create an article outline for SEO by reverse engineering our top competitors and plugging in the headings. And it's referenced each of the headings based on our competitors. And then the final step, is to actually figure out the average word count based on our competitors, right? So, so far we've got the LSI keywords, so we know what to include in our content and which relevant terms we should include inside the text. Then we've got the article outline and the headings in the best possible order based on our competitors. And the final step is to figure out the best word count based on the average of our competitors ranking. As you can see, it reverse engineers our top ranking competitors for the keyword we want to rank for and then gives us an average. Now, when I've checked this before, I would say add maybe 20% onto that because sometimes po.com doesn't scrape the whole page, but that just gives you a general idea of how much content you need to include. 
That's basically it. That's basically how to turn Po.com into your own SEO tool that scrapes the internet for the keyword you want to rank and reverse engineers your competitors for free. And bear in mind, this method is free and still very, very quick to do because you just paste in the prompts. Whereas with ChatGPT, you would have to pay for the plugin and then you would have to select plugins and then web pilot and mess around a bit more. So it's faster and completely free. You don't need to pay. Now, another system that I want to show you is basically really useful for hiring writers. So let's say you're hiring a team, maybe you're getting some writers from Upwork.com, etc., and you're trying to get some writers, but you want human written content because you're aware of the risks of AI and you want to be careful with your site. Now, you can get some free AI detection tools like this to detect whether your content is plagiarized. Now, here's what I would say. Google still say that they reward high quality content, however it is produced. However, what I would say is there's still risks to AI content long term, and you do need to take it seriously. You do need to be careful, especially if you're doing this for like enterprise and let's say you're building out a website, massive company that can't afford to take any risks or any chances with AI content. So for me personally, for my websites like chipperburst.com, I don't care whether it's AI content or not. However, if you're hiring a writer and you place a premium on human written content, for example, like I said, my agency, we only have human writers because we don't want to take any risks with our clients or anything like that. And we don't want to jeopardize their content. What you can do for free is, and this is an article I've written before, personally written. So it's completely human written content. So you can plug it into an AI detector like this and... I think you get about 500 words so you can check and detect the AI content right there. And you can see that the AI generated text is 0% and human written text is 100%, right? This is really useful because if you want to filter out hiring writers and you want to make sure that you hire writers who only actually use human written content, not AI tools like ChatGPT or Po.com, then you can use these AI detection tools. They're not 100% accurate, but it gives you a feel for it. And usually as well, you can tell by the content itself just by reading it, whether it's AI written or whether it's human written. And then you can filter out any writers that are using ChatGPT. So AI detection is useful if you have a domain that you really care about or you're doing enterprise level SEO and you want to just stay safe long term. It's also good for filtering out the hiring process and not just for hiring writers, but for just hiring anyone in general who doesn't take the time to actually fill out the job application and just automates it with ChatGPT. That might not be someone you want to hire. And additionally, it helps you filter out and avoid anyone who's using ChatGPT. But like I said, Google already came out and said it doesn't matter whether your content is AI or human written. They're going to reward it. However, that could change one day. So you need to be careful. Use AI at your own risk. And like I said, I always use them on test sites because it's just a high risk strategy that's fun to do. And you can use free tools like Scribber.com for AI detection. And this is a free tool. So it's nice and easy to use. Let's take some AI content and we'll see whether it actually detects it. And I'm not saying this can't be gamed at all, but it just helps you filter stuff out so that if you are hiring or you're doing enterprise level SEO, then you can avoid any sort of risks later on. So let's pop that in there. And as you can see, it's not 100% accurate, but it does give you an idea that the content is at least 13% generated. And even if it's 13% generated, you might not want to take the risk and you might say, right, I'm not going to use that content. So thanks so much for watching. If you want to check out my free ChatGPT SEO course, I'll leave a link in the comments so you can get instant free access to that. If you do want to book in a call about how to get more leads, traffic and sales to your business and you'll get an SEO domination plan, plus we'll answer any questions that you have and you'll discover how to quickly outrank your competitors with link building. So feel free to book that in links in the comments as well. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate it. Bye bye.